We now chat to Caroline Kendi Robb, Executive Director of the Africa Progress Panel, an international advocate for equitable and sustainable development in Africa. Climate change is uh, still a, a very uh, grave concern for, for Africa. And, uh, you know, many people have defined climate change as the greatest social justice challenge of our time. And if you think about it, uh, Africa has had the least to do with creating the effects of climate change, but it's a continent that will suffer the most. Farmers themselves are ready to adapt, but it needs investment. And I think uh, this is a, the critical issue at the moment. It's uh, investment and it needs to, there needs to be clear policies that are focusing on the African farmer. And those policies need to focus on the 70% of people across Africa whose livelihoods are dependent on farming. The other side though is the urban areas and I think we'll see increasing effects of climate change in urban areas. And by 2050, 45% of the African population will be living in urban areas. Many people rightly are calling for some kind of multilateral solution to climate change, although it is proving much more difficult in the times of uh, economic crisis across the globe. But without a doubt, this, we need some kind of global solution to climate change. In today's last feature, It's Africa's Time, we'll look at South Africa's strategic requirement for increased renewable energy production. We talk with government representatives and the old mutual investment group South Africa, whose portfolio has already taken big steps into the green energy space. Across the continent, wind and solar resources are plentiful, making them the key focus of renewable energy solutions. In South Africa, government's realistic target for 2014 is that 14% of the national power be produced from renewable sources. The number of issues that uh, have, have become very clear over the years, uh, first of all, is that we are not in a position to continue building more and more fossil-fired power stations without regard to the environmental impacts uh, due to the greenhouse gas emissions from these mainly coal-based power stations. To the community at large, fossil fuel it could result into respiratory diseases which cost the country a lot of money uh, from a medical perspective. Uh, secondly, what we beginning to also find is that more and more uh, it does not make technical sense for South Africa to build big, lumpy coal-fired power stations in one corner of, of the country and then transport the power you know, down long transmission lines. The coal power stations are predominantly located in the east of the country and power is then exported to the west, resulting in transmission losses as well as high costs. Renewable energy installations, however, facilitate small pockets of production between these main transition lines, supporting the national grid with local, cost-effective power. But if you wanted to invest in renewable energy, it's, it has been quite difficult up until this point. Now suddenly investors have an opportunity to participate either by way of debt or equity in renewable energy, which is arguably a pretty important theme if you look at the government's integrated resource plan in line with sort of international norms and, and standards to try and address this much broader societal issue called climate change. We believe that um, we uh, one of the first uh, movers in that uh, segment as a country and accordingly we would like to be able to you know take uh, full advantage. There is also an element that relates to you know creating local jobs out of this uh, industrialization. We believe that through bringing most of the value chain into the country we might be able to you know stimulate our economic growth in an area that is huge in, in terms of its potential. The purpose of the Ideas Fund is to invest in infrastructure assets and, and what we're seeking to do is, is leverage the two trillion rand in retirement fund capital in South Africa into investments that are the direct economic drivers of our economy. I mean if you're a pension fund, you have liabilities uh, that sit well out into the future. 
uh, somebody with a pension fund should be asking themselves, will the world be a better governed, more environmentally sound, more socially equitable place when it comes time for me to retire as a result of the investments that have been made now on my behalf? So what, what Amix is doing is leveraging institutional capital. So again, that retirement fund capital and through funds such as the Ideas Fund, we're investing in projects to create independent power producers. Then the independent power producers will produce what's planned to be 20 to 30% of the overall production of electricity in South Africa. At the moment, we've got one dominant player, which is the national utility, ESCO. Therefore, it is imperative for the country to have other players into the generation mix. But more importantly is that independent power producers would come in with smaller generators which could be located in different areas of the country, especially in rural areas, and it could even stimulate the economies there. That's key because it tries to assist with some of the social developmental goals. I mean, our argument is that by picking up a sustainability lens and looking at the world, we get deep insight into risk and opportunity. Certainly when you look at a company and you ask yourself, well, is this company providing a good or a service that is going to be around for the next 10 or 15 years? Are they being mindful of the, you know, the unpriced externalities, be they social or environmental, in their business model? Will they be able to continue to survive um, as the world starts to evolve? And, and starts rewarding or penalizing companies that, uh, you know, that aren't taking some of these risks into consideration. But we also pursue policies that would incentivize the development of renewable energy options on the supply side and on the demand side. The policy is that we would buy a certain amount of renewable energy into the generation mix notwithstanding the fact that it might not be the cheapest option you know, available for us. But in macroeconomic terms, we also recognize the positive impact that this makes. Renewable energy is already financially viable. So the, our, our program of investment in renewable energy is not part of any, uh, any charitable work. We're investing because it makes sound financial sense. The renewable energy investment story in South Africa is a positive one. It's a great example of private sector and government coming together to direct capital towards addressing a long-term uh, sustainability issue. We certainly have a good starting point, and our starting point is that we have a resource that you know most parts of the world would envy. That, coupled with the program that we have designed around renewable energy, you know, puts us in a strategically better position through technology development, through local manufacturing, through creating a market for those products that would hopefully, you know, start permeating not only the South African development community, but also Africa and, hey, ultimately the world. Africa growth rates have been incredible over the last few years and the economies of Africa have been far more resilient than many people have predicted or expected. And the IMF in uh, 2013 predicts that Africa will grow at 5.7%. And, and this is incredible considering that the, the globe is predicted to grow at 3.5%. Uh, so we still have this resilience across many countries in Africa. So one of the greatest challenges is, is inequality. Inequality is, is a drag on growth. There are still over 380 million people in Africa who survive on $1.25 a day. So in the past, businesses were seen as, as separate from, from government and, and civil society. But many of the small businesses and big businesses across Africa are saying, as a business, we want to be involved in ensuring there's a shared value in society, a stable society with better health and better education outcomes is also a better society for us to invest in. So I think it's about throwing away these traditional roles of these different stakeholders and saying, actually, we all have a role to play. But the other way that businesses can play a role in social change in Africa is through simply paying taxes. So this is about domestic resource mobilization, which is critical for, for the government to be able to therefore invest in issues of uh, education and, and health.